Hello, this is Ben, and today we're looking at an IELTS Task 1 essay. And unusually, for today, we're going to look at a general one. I don't usually get many students who, um, who are taking a general module for IELTS, but this is from one of those students. And, uh, of course, Task 1 for general IELTS is letter writing, usually, which might seem a bit old-fashioned because... You know, people mostly write emails these days, not letters, but that's usually what they want, a letter. In this case, it's a letter to a friend talking about recently moving to a different house, why you've moved, what the new house is like, inviting your friends to come and visit. Tells you how to start the letter, dear. That's the, uh, the salutation, we call it, which starts the letter. And uh, let's take a look at the student's essay now. So, as usual, at this point, I would recommend that you pause the video to actually read it on each of the slides that I'll show you so that you can think about which kinds of scores you think this essay deserves. And then when I tell you my estimated scores later, you can see how closely they match up with your guesses. So this is the first slide, the first part of the essay. This is the second and final one. And you'll also need to check the band descriptors. Apologies, they're a bit small if it's a phone screen, but you can uh, print these out from the IELTS website. As always, I'll remind you that these are for the public, so they're for everyone. You just Google IELTS Writing Task 1 Band Descriptors Public Version. And as I said, unusually, we're looking at general training, general training module GT is what you have to look at here, not A, which is academic, which is what most students take. But I chose to talk about this one, even though it's general training, because it's such an unusual essay, as I'm sure you can tell just by having a very quick look at it. Think about what really stands out when you look at it. So now I'm going to talk about this one. So, yeah, it does start with dear, as is requested. Dear my best friend is something that no native English speaker would ever say. Sounds very odd. Uh, let's just keep it to dear Tracy with a comma like we need. And then hi Tracy is a separate salutation. We don't need to say hello twice. So dear Tracy, I would prefer hi because it's uh, not a formal letter, but it tells us we got to use dear, so let's follow the instructions like we're supposed to. Dear Tracy, I moved last weekend. Fortunately, it did not rain during the move, I guess. Uh, this is what we call a run-on uh, sentence using a comma. It should be a new sentence to make grammatic, uh, grammatical sense. Fortunately, it did not ring. Separate sentence with a new subject. The weather was nice. So I could move. Well, what does well mean? I'm not sure. So move here means move home, I suppose. Uh, I could complete the move. Uh, let's say, without any major problems. Without any major difficulty, things went relatively smoothly. Because my daughter became primary school student, she needed her room. Okay, so I kind of get what the writer means, though obviously it could be a bit better. 
So I recently started primary school, that's elementary school. We say primary school in the UK. So she recently became a, a primary school student, a student. Because of this, she now... Well, needed is okay, but she now needs her own room. Maybe slightly better. So because my daughter recently became a primary school student, she needs her own room now. Sounds a bit more natural. So I moved to a wider house uh, in Korean. The word for wide also means spacious. In English, obviously, wide is when we're talking about 2D shapes, length and width. Um, for an interior, more spacious, we want to say. We talk about it being spacious or cramped. It's the opposite. So I moved to a more spacious house. My new house obviously has three rooms, which are... No, there's four rooms mentioned. So three rooms, two bathrooms, a kitchen, a living room is four rooms. So the writer means three, three bedrooms. My house says three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a kitchen, and a living room. There's no... Uh, no period here to end the sentence. That's pretty, pretty basic stuff. Uh, I painted green color on the wall. Well, we just say I painted the walls green. Paint something red, paint something green. That's how we say it in English. I painted the walls green in the living room. Walls, because there's more than one wall in a room. So kind of basic grammar mistakes bookcase one there is a bookcase and a sofa in the living room again no period or we don't say period in the UK we say full stop no full stop there are two pine trees and a small swing in the yard period Behind the house, there is a little garden, period. <laughs> I think you get the idea. I won't keep saying it every time. Uh, I will plant some vegetables. Well, there. In the garden. I will plant some vegetables there in the spring. The house is my cousin's house. Don't need to repeat that now. The house is my cousin's. It's my cousin's house. Future plans. I will rent it for six years until my daughter. Well, graduate is kind of when you get a qualification usually. So graduate from university because you get a university degree. You can graduate from high school in the USA because you get a high school diploma. Um, but certainly not primary school. So finishes primary school. Not at next Saturday. We actually say on Saturday. But we uh, we drop the preposition before saying certain words. Next, this, last, or every. So we wouldn't say on next Saturday. We'd just say next Saturday. So next Saturday at 5 p.m., this is the same sentence. We're going to have a housewarming party in my house yard. Is that the front yard or the backyard? Let's say my backyard. It's a barbecue party. Barbecue parties are always in the backyard. That's the, uh, that's the tradition. So let's have a barbecue party together. Let's have a good time together. See you next Saturday. Goodbye. It's not a phone conversation. We don't say goodbye. Um, and it should be a separate line anyway, because we're signing off. All the best. Informal sign up for a friend. You wouldn't write that. In a formal letter, all the best. Uh, John.
put your name. Just the first name, because it's a friend. Okay, so what did you give this? And is it going to match up with what I will give it? Now, what will I give it? Uh, dun, 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 uh, four overall is what I came up with. With four in each individual part. Why? Let's have a look. We've got to go to the bottom half. So, for the first part, it's task achievement. So, four might seem a bit low, since the writer is tasked to explain why they've moved, describe the new house, and invite their friend. And this is, uh, this is done. My daughter needed more space, because she's got her primary school books now and that kind of thing. Describe the bathroom, this description, yep, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a kitchen and a living room. There is no doubt that that, that is descriptive and invites your friend over. We're having a party. Why don't you come along? So those kind of task requirements are met. So why is it so low? I'm going to explain that now. For me, it's mostly about tone. The tone may be inappropriate. Tone is important for general training because you need to understand that a letter you write to a friend is very different from a letter you write to your boss, for example, or a complaint letter that you write to a company. The tone may be inappropriate. It's not five because five says the tone may be variable and sometimes inappropriate. I don't think it's sometimes. I think it's all the time. Because I just think, what would I say if I were writing to my friend? And it's very easy to think about that. And it's very easy to realize that I wouldn't write in this way. What's the problem with writing in this way? It's very uh, mechanical. I moved last weekend. It didn't rain. The weather was nice. Because my daughter, no acknowledgement that a friend would know the daughter's name, would know the daughter's situation, would know the daughter um, is of the age where she would be beginning uh, school, starting school. There is a description but is this how you would describe your new place to your friends? There is a bookcase and a sofa in the living room. The walls are green. I mean, is this the kind of thing that your friend would want to know? If it were my friend, I would be bragging about um, the fancy technology that I had bought to deck the place out like uh, a huge widescreen TV and a home, a home theater I had set up with surround sound speakers and uh, a projector for watching movies to try to um, sell it to my friends, make my friend want to visit, make my friend as excited about it as I am. And I think that's, uh, that's the key point, excitement. Um, there is no sense of excitement here. I can't wait for you to see the new place because of how amazing it is. Why is it amazing? Because of all this amazing stuff I have in it, which is not not the bookcase, uh, which is fine. Most people need a bookcase, but it's not something I think would make you want to see the place. You would probably just expect there to be a bookcase there. Um, so that is that is one part of it. Um, the kind of human emotion, you know, I want you to visit because I haven't seen you. We haven't seen each other for such a long time. Um, and I want to reconnect with you, spend some time with you. Um, yeah, have a barbecue party is something everyone likes. A cookout, we say have a cookout in the backyard. But uh, where is the human element? Where's the emotion 
you know, catching up with your old friend. It is uh, not really there. That kind of human feeling and emotion is a little bit uh, absent, I think. So let's say the weather wasn't nice and it was raining. That could be an example of how you would add some human feeling. You know, the, the move was a nightmare because uh, there was a rainstorm, you know, a thunderstorm, which made the move really difficult and everything got wet. Um, these are the kinds of interesting things that you might wish to talk about uh, with a friend. You know, what would your friend be interested in hearing? Not these kind of, uh, like I said, mechanistic details. Okay, so I think you get the point for that one. So let's have a look at coherence and cohesion, which was also a four. Key point, a lack of overall progression. Yep. Reasons for move are given, the place is described, and an invite is made. But there's no real connection between those things. It's not like the writer is saying, this place is amazing because of all the amazing things. I have the best bookcase you have ever seen. This bookcase will take your breath away. It will blow your mind. It is so impressive. So I can't wait for you to come and see this amazing bookcase of which the viewing will uh, completely change your life. It will be a life-altering experience seeing this uh, bookcase. So those connections are not really made. And... Uh, moving on to lexical resource, which is basically uh, the, the words used, the vocabulary kind of, um, uses only basic vocabulary. Uh, that's the key point here. So I live in Korea. My, my Korean is terrible. But um, when I was taking Korean classes, beginner classes, this is the kind of thing that I could have written as a beginner, you know, the weather was nice. Fortunately, it did not rain. Uh, there is, uh, I should say there are flashes of more interesting language, like a barbecue party, a housewarming party. Those are quite nice little collocations. Uh, um, but in general, you can see that um, the person who wrote this does not have a lot of English does not have a broad vocabulary, an expansive vocabulary. So it's a little bit limited. I think that's the key word that I would give for the whole essay, limited. We're looking at very limited here. Uh, limited grammar too, sorry, limited grammatical range and accuracy. So attempts complex sentences, but they tend to be less accurate. Yeah, there are actually a couple of fairly nice uh, attempts at complex sentences, starting a sentence with because, fronting with the reason. Because she started primary school, she needs her own room, even though the grammar is not perfect. Uh, another one I liked was the use of... Uh, until, which would be a less common uh, connective. Um, that that was quite nice, you know, to make uh, a complex sentence too. But for the most part, you know, just looking at this overall, the bigger picture, you can see that uh, the grammar is very limited. It looks, it looks almost like a poem, you know, these tiny sentences with no paragraphs. Um, it could be excellently written with no paragraphs, but you would uh, basically expect um, someone with a higher level of language to connect the ideas quite clearly and um, cohesively. Um, I, I should say so. Um, uh, 
when you kind of get to the higher levels, it talks about the need for uh, paragraphing appropriately or uh, skillfully for the uh, for the very highest levels, um, but to not even attempt to paragraph, you would think that's a bit more characteristic of uh, low level English users. So hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure if you would agree with my suggested scoring. Uh, if you don't, or even if you do, please feel free to leave a comment uh, for this video and share your thoughts. And as always, thank you for watching and for listening. Bye-bye.